Praise the living God. Beloved, you are most welcome to God's own elect word and prayer meeting. We are here as elect of God to study the scriptures and also pray to obtain two things. One, the knowledge of the scriptures. Two, the power of God. The Lord Jesus Christ told the disciples, uh, the Pharisees, sorry, that uh, you don't know the scriptures nor the power of God. And for that matter, you are in error. No, if you don't know the scriptures or the power of God, you end up being in error. And that is what we want to escape. And for that matter, we need to take time to study the scriptures and by the Holy Spirit, by the help of the Holy Spirit, to get the understanding. Then we also pray so that we can also obtain the power of God. And by this, we escape the trap of error that the enemy set against us. Mama Meg, you are most welcome. Mama um, um, uh, uh, Josephine, you are most welcome. And every one of you, I welcome you. Hallelujah. Today, what we are going to treat is entitled The Secret Ministers of Death. The Secret Ministers of Death. Hallelujah. The Secret Ministers of Death. They are ministers. Of death, but they are secret. We have open ones there. Those ones, they are open. The, everything that they, they do is open, but we have other ones that they are very secret that you may not know unless they confess it before you can know that that's what they are practicing, that's what they believe in. Hallelujah. And so we have to understand all those things. God bless you for uh, coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, so before then, let us enter into um, the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This morning, we commit ourselves unto your hands, even as we are coming to study your word. Give us understanding and help us to apply them rightly in our life. May you destroy every satanic agenda against our meeting today. Let your children come in their numbers and be blessed. Father, let your word come in the power to also bless your people and deliver your people from any uh, delusion. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. God richly bless you. But before I proceed with any scripture that we, produce, uh, we, 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 we depend on or we will read, I would like to ask, I would like to um, humbly give, give some this advice or give this advice to every one of you. Hallelujah. That your spiritual leader or your man of God may be a preacher who speaks strongly against sin. That is fine. But that should not be something that convinces you to believe that he's on the right path. Praise the Lord. Or he's leading you to the right destination. I said... Your spiritual leader, your pastor, your apostle, your prophet may be a preacher who speaks strongly against sin. Yet, let that never convince you that he's a right man of God or he's leading you on the right path. Praise the Lord. Why? Because we have a lot of religious bodies who also speak greatly against sin. Yet, they don't have the spirit of Christ. So speaking against sins is not a qualification or indication that that person is right man of God or he has the spirit of Christ. We have to notice that. Devil used that tricks to capture many Christians' attention. Praise the Lord. Many of his men that he has sent into the system, they speak against sin. And by doing that, the people begin to believe that they are righteous men of God. But that is, that is not true. Hallelujah. So if the person is speaking against the sin, fine, that's cool. It's not bad that you, you, you preach against sin. But that does not qualify a man or God to be a righteous man of God or sent by God. Because the devil used that means to delude people. Praise the Lord. That's one thing we have to understand. Amen. There are a lot of religious bodies, as I said, 
that they speak against him, but they don't have the spirit of God. So that is one thing we have to understand. So if you really want to know where your spiritual leader, your pastor, your man of God, your, your, your apostle, your prophet is leading you to, then you must question his belief system. You must touch his belief system or her belief system. Some of, the, some of you are leading by women. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But amen and amen. Uh, you must question his or her belief system. Praise the Lord. Beloved sisters and brothers, I, this is a serious thing I am I'm discussing with you. It's a very serious thing. Hallelujah. Because we learn from the Bible that there's a guy called Hamilius and another one called Philatus. They were maybe speaking against him as some of the pastors of today are doing. But they have only one belief. What was wrong? That was wrong. And according to the scripture, because of that one wrong belief that they had, they overthrew people's faith. And they themselves, they have astray from Christ. So when we talk about the belief system, the very dangerous thing that the devil is trying to use that because many people's attention is on the moral kind of lifestyle that, or immoral kind of lifestyle. So everybody is speaking against fornication, against uh, indecent dressing, against uh, uh, wearing of idol, things used by idols, against all those things. Hallelujah. People are speaking against that. That is right. But that does not mean that such people are, are from God. It's not a criteria to, to indicate that somebody is from God. Hallelujah. The one thing that we have to know, that we have to know that the belief system is our foundation of everything. If the person is holding on to a wrong belief system, he's ending up in a different place. Though he may speak against sin or all those things. That's very important. Hallelujah. That is very important. Let's uh, continue. So, if you really want to, uh, uh, if you really and serious about your spiritual leader is, or about where your spiritual leader is leading you into, then you need to know about his belief system. First, you must know his belief concerning who the Lord Jesus Christ is. Who the Lord Jesus Christ is and what the Lord Jesus Christ is. You must know that. You must behave like the uh, uh, disciples of Christ. You know that disciples of Christ always question Jesus Christ. About what he said. About this. About that. Peter even went on and asked him. What, what, what are they going to gain? When, uh, what, what are they going to gain when they are following him? After they have left everything, they are fully, what are they going to gain? Philip asked him, show us your father. That will be known for us. So they question Jesus Christ left and right because they want to know actually where they are going. Praise the Lord. We shouldn't be Christians that will sit down and then every concussion that we, we swallow and then we are moving. You must know the person, who that person, or Jesus Christ is to that person. You must know that belief system. You have, you have to get clear understanding about who Jesus Christ is to that person. Second, you must know his belief system about, about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, if he is believed in the wrong direction, that person is also, hallelujah, is going to the wrong direction. Do you know, that's the, do you know the reason why if you have belief, wrong belief system uh, or you have wrong belief, it will lead you to, to internal condemnation. It's because wrong belief makes God liar. If God says this is A and you believe it is B, that means God is a liar. That is it. So that is a strategy devil is doing. That the things God says it is A, devil will cause his ministers to cause you to believe that it is B. And sometimes, that is why I call the secret um, uh, ministers of death. Sometimes the person believes in opposite, but he will never mention it. You only draw your focus on the, that shall not do this, that shall not do that, that shall not wear in the same dress. You draw all your focus on that, but he is believing in a different thing. 
because he knows that by the fact that he's believing a different thing, that belief system will take you to the devil. The master who sent him. Praise the Lord. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ, the words of his own, uh, the Lord's mouth, that when a blind is leading a blind, the, where that person is ending up, the, the follower will also end up that place. It's a spiritual principle. We have to understand that the spiritual world uh, is, is, a world of, is a world of legality, a world of principle. Praise the Lord. It's a world of principle. And so, if we take things trivia on earth here, and we think everything goes in the realm of the spirit, it doesn't go that, that, like that. Praise the Lord. That is why we have to be critical about our belief. We have to be critical about who is leading us. We have to be critical. We don't have to just follow anybody just like that. May the Lord give grace, the grace to us to be critical in whatever we are doing. Hallelujah. And so, you must, be, you must understand, you must know the person who is leading you, you must know his belief, belief system or his belief concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. As last time I was explained, the devil has created all confusion about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some believe that he is coming before tribulation. Some believe that tribulation is coming before uh, 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 Jesus Christ comes. Some believe that in the middle of the, in the midst, middle of the tribulation, Jesus will come. A lot of you know, doctrine around that, that very particular topic coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the devil knows that in the days of Philatos and, if, uh, and then Hermenius, when they taught one for the false doctrine about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were able to overthrow many people's faith. And for that matter, that doctrine alone, that topic alone, there's a lot of a lot of doctrines around it. Praise God. To just confuse the children of God. That's very simple. It's very simple. The Lord Jesus himself said it when the apostle asked him about his coming in Matthew 24. He made it simple. He made everything clear that he will come after the tribulation. He said it. But there's a way many people have twisted all those scriptures and then made it in the, in the opposite. And the people believe in it. And most of Christians believe in that opposite doctrine. Most of Christians of today believe in that opposite doctrine. So they say, they open their mouth and say, we believe that uh, uh, Jesus Christ's rapture will take place before tribulation. And the one delusion about this is that they have also had revelations and prophecies about it that Jesus Christ said he is coming to rapture his people before tribulation. But in the scripture, the Lord did never said that. The Lord said, after the tribulation, I'm coming. And so by these revelations and other things, most especially the holiness people, they, they just swallow everything and they are moving in that direction. Please. Please. My brothers and sisters, we must be critical and we must be prayerful. Ask the Holy Spirit to help us to understand things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't have to be Christian that was the pastors who spoon feed us. Hallelujah. May the Lord give grace to us in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. So the coming of the Lord Jesus, you must know the person's view or belief in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If the person is believing the opposite of what the Lord Jesus Christ said, you must know that he's making the law a liar. And for that matter, he is not going to. Inherit the kingdom of God. You must know that. Simple. The law, his own mouth, he say, I'm coming after the tribulation. Matthew 24, 29. He's coming after the tribulation. They have turned it that he, the rapture will take place before the tribulation. Hallelujah. Even Paul spoke about it. The coming of the Lord, the coming of the day of the Lord will, will not come until the Antichrist, the man of sin, is revealed. It is clear. But they have turned things upside down. And most Christians, what breaks the heart that most Christians believe the, the, uh, the, the, the opposites, what the, the scripture says. That's the breaking of the heart. Praise the Lord. And then, hallelujah. And, it, and they are taking it trivia. The, many Christians say, I don't believe that rapture will take place before uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, uh, I don't believe that tribulation will take place. I don't believe in that. I don't believe that. Opening your mouth to say this, you must know exactly what you are saying. Because the Lord Jesus Christ said, by the words of your mouth, 
you will be justified or condemned. That is it. So Christianity is not about, it's not all about what, uh, what you do alone, but, but the words of your mouth will also come into judgment. So when the moment you open your mouth and say, I don't believe in that, you must know that that one too will come into judgment. Praise the Lord. For instance, Jesus Christ, according to the scripture, the scripture says the Lord Jesus Christ has ended the law. And it means all the law. If you believe, if you say that I don't believe that Jesus has ended all the law, because some of the law, some Christians are saying that uh, 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 Ten Commandments is not even yesterday, about three days ago, a pastor, a holiness pastor, was saying the same thing to one of the pastors here that the Ten Commandment is is still working because the Lord did not do it away. So when the person believes in this opposite. Hallelujah. And confess it with his mouth. That confession made will be in the judgment against him. And if you are, follow, if you are following him, if he, that person is your pastor, where he's going, you are also going there with him. That is it. You get a point here. It's a very serious thing. Christians must wake up and begin to know things by themselves, for themselves. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. That is why John told that one of the members in the Old Testament, uh, in, the, in the early church, that the anointing you have, you don't need anyone to teach you. The anointing will teach you. Christians of today are, are, are not depending on the Holy Spirit teachings. When you depend on the Holy Spirit teachings, and then the Holy Spirit teaches you, when you go to a right pastor and he's teaching you a right thing, you will know. He's teaching you a wrong thing, you will know because Holy Spirit has already taught you in your heart already. So when the word is coming and it's agreeing with what the Holy Spirit has taught you, you just know. You, you know that it, it's agree with you. But if you are not taught by the Holy Spirit, whatever they give to you, whether it's true or not, you don't know because you have not allowed yourself to be taught by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. May the Lord give grace to us. So you must know that one. The belief system regarding observation of days and, uh, and seasons, you must know. If the person is believing in observation of days and seasons, you know that he's wrong. Ask questions about him. Praise the Lord. He, you, you, you must know his belief system concerning the law. Whether, the, 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 whether he believes that Christ is the end of the law or not if he says no that means he's under the law he's a minister of death praise the lord he's under the law and he's a minister of the law if the answer is yes then you can question him that why is he still teaching people to pay tithes because if the law has ended all the law then a tight issue shouldn't come in. Why still still teaching people to pay tight? Praise the Lord. Why still teaching people to observe days and seasons? Like Christmas and Easter and other things, which is not in the Bible, which is not in the New Testament practices. Why still teaching people to do that? You must ask him all those questions. If he's not, he's not giving you good answer, you must leave and find a better place to go. That is it. Even we, when we send our children to school and we know that as the, ch the school is not teaching well for our children to pass the exams, we take them from that school and send it to another school where we can get a better teachers to teach them. Don't we do that? We do that. But when it comes to our souls, the salvation of souls, we don't care. Whether the person is teaching us good or not, we don't care. All that we want to hear that somebody is prophesying that we can we will make it in life. You can make it. You can make it. The land you also buy some. The mansion you also buy based some. The cars you also... You know, all those things that promises that has nothing to do with our salvation. That Apostle Paul call it trash, rubbish. That is what they, they, they promise us with. And we are happy with it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ said, 
if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul, what does it, what does that that what does it that promise uh, that that profits you? You profit, profit nothing about that. May the Lord give grace to us. Hallelujah. So you must know all those belief systems before you can trust your soul into the hand of that spiritual leader. Hallelujah. No fear of the, uh, the let me come in from this angle too. Fear of this that some people fear that they trust their hands, their, their lives into spiritual leaders and for that matter they, they will lead them into wrong place. So they don't want to even go to church at all. They don't want to be any they go to church at all. They don't want to you know, uh, follow anybody at all. But that's also wrong. Praise the Lord. Because if you are not appointed as a pastor or as, as minister and you are you are a Christian, you must get somebody who will give account on your soul. It's a principle in the spiritual realm. The Bible says the pastors will give account on the souls of the people. So God has appointed them specific, specifically to take care of the souls of the people so that when they come, they will give account on them. So if you don't have anybody giving account on your soul, it's also another tragedy. That's why scripture says we should test all the spirit. He didn't say because of that quiet in the stay at your home, don't have anybody to lead you. No, he didn't say that. He said, test the spirit. When you come on the, on, what are the, on the platform of Facebook or whatever, that you want that person to be your spiritual leader, test the spirit. You can have time to pray. When I came here first time about two years ago, I came on Facebook. I told the people that, not that I'm holding the Bible, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. That is why you should believe in me and follow me. No, you must take time and pray about me. And ask the Lord, if you pray sincerely from your heart, the script Bible says, when you ask him bread, he's not going to give you a stone. If you, are, if you have a true heart and you really want to inherit the kingdom and you pray, God knows your heart. He will tell you who the person is. He will tell you. And one of the sisters did it. And later on called me. That sister has remained till now. Even everybody goes and he has remained because he has tried, tested it and he knows. What is he's, he's doing with? He's working with. Do you understand? Hallelujah. It's, it's very serious. And some of the Christians of today, we don't want to do that. We don't want to test the spirit. Because of laziness, we don't have any time to even pray and or be fast to ask the Lord, who is this person? So when we come, we can't, can't wait small and we are not prophesying or we are not saying anything that you, you like, you move and go to some other place. And then what, what some people. So they don't have any specific uh, spiritual leader who will give account on his soul or her soul. That's another tragedy that the enemy can bring on your life. May the Lord deliver us from all such things. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. It's very important. Hallelujah. So you must all know all those things. And then um, uh, know where you are being led to by any man of God. Please, hallelujah. No, as you are listening, keep sharing because by this message, some, people's be wake, some people will be waking up in their Christian journey. So the topic is the secret minister of death, the secret ministers or minister of death. In the Old Testament law, there is a ceremonial part. I want you to listen to this word. There is, uh, in the Old Testament law, there is a ceremonial part of it and also the moral part of it or the ritualistic part of it and also ethical part of it so the law is mainly divided into two ceremonial part of it and ethical part of it hallelujah now the ceremonial law has to do with um circumcision animal sacrifice atonement of many kinds um, observation of days, months, seasons, years, and some others. That is the ceremonial aspect or ritual aspect, ritualistic aspect of the law. Good. And the moral aspect of the law or ethical aspect of the law is the instructions like honor your father as your uh, and your mother, honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. 
you shall not co commit adultery, you shall not uh, steal, you shall not uh, bear false witness, you shall not covet your neighbor's house and other uh, 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 and some others. Hallelujah. These are the um, uh, moral aspect of the law. Praise God. Now, if someone believes that Christ did not end all of the law, and for that matter, he or she practice any of the ceremonial law. Hallelujah. That person cannot practice it in secret. It is open. Praise the Lord. Because that person has to either do animal sacrifice or uh, observe, uh, uh, observes days and seasons. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. That is what uh, the, the people of Galen Galentia were doing. Praise the Lord. They were practicing ceremonial laws of the law. And so, Apostle Paul got to know about it. Apostle, no God, Apostle Paul got to know about it, that they are celebrating, they are, they are observing days and seasons and other things. So when they are, they, they, are, they are practicing those things, Apostle Paul got to know about that. And so he began to rebuke them. He, Apostle Paul started addressing that issue from the book of Gal Galatians chapter 3. Verse 1 going, he says, Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Because the truth is different from the law. Bible says uh, 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 the law was brought by Moses, but the truth and grace was brought by Christ. So truth is different from the law. The law does with the physical aspect of our life. That shall not steal. If you steal, you are caught by the law. But the truth, it says, that shall not steal. But if you desire to steal, you have st we have stolen. That's the truth. So the truth deals with the physical aspect of our life. But uh, the tr uh, I said that uh, the Lord does deals with our physical actions. But uh, the truth deals with our actions in our heart, the desires of our heart. That is the truth. So the difference between the law and the truth. Lord does with the facts. Deals with the facts. But the truth deals with the inner decisions. Hallelujah. That is the truth. So he said, why, why would it be with you that you do, don't, do not believe the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only thing I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So this is dealing with the law. The people went contrary to what the, to the to what Apostle Paul was teaching them by obeying the law. And how Apostle Paul, how did Apostle Paul know that they were obeying the law? According to the chapter verse chapter 4, verse 10, because the same issue that Apostle Paul was addressing and addressing. And then Apostle Paul said. You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Praise the Lord. So, what they were practicing, they were practicing the ritualistic aspect of the law. They were practicing the uh, ceremonial uh, um, aspect of the law, whereby they were uh, observing Sabbath days. They were observing man, new moons. Uh, they were exact, uh, 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 observing the seasons. Praise the Lord. Passover and all those things. And then Apostle Paul told them that because they are started observing those things, they are bound themselves with the law. And they are, uh, they are going to end up their Christian life. He told them that they are foolish. He told them that they have been bewitched. He told them that they, because they are doing, they are, he is afraid for them. Hallelujah. Why? Because by that, they bind themselves with the law. With the law says, everyone who is under the law is under curse, and no one can be justified by the law. So going back to that place is a dangerous thing that any Christian will do. Hallelujah. 
in those days we are people who were taught were teaching them these things and this time we are people who are teaching us to do the same thing binding us with the law and christians are claiming that they are under they are not under the law but still they are under the law it's a strong thing that the enemy did to is doing to the church so no one can observe that aspect of the law secretly it is open so if a minister the person who believe in the person who believe in that hallelujah is a minister and is teaching people to also go by that by observing days and other things hallelujah that person is a minister of death why because that what the scripture says according to the book of second corinthians chapter three verse seven it says but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious the ministry of death which loss that was written and engraved on the stone is the ten commandment praise the lord and said it was glorious so that the children of israel could not look steadily at the face of moses because of the glory of his countenance the glory of his face hallelujah bible makes us to understand that when the most when moses went to the mountain on the 40 days and came back with the law he his face was shining and for that matter the people could not what look at his face hallelujah and that word apostle paul is quoting he said that ministry that uh, moses brought from the mountain is called a ministry of death why because according to the scripture when the law came sin took advantage and killed the people who received the law hallelujah that is that is why it's called the ministry of death Hallelujah. He said, which glory was passing away? How would the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? We are ministers of the Spirit. Those who are living by the law are ministers of death. The, those who believe in Christ, totally believe in Christ, and they believe that all the law has, the Lord Jesus Christ has done away with all the law. And for that matter, we wholly take hold of believing his, uh, his work that he did on cross. Such people are ministers of the spirit. But those who believe that, they claim that they believe in Jesus Christ and yet they believe in the Ten Commandment. Bible says such people are ministers of death. They are ministers of death. That is why I said if you have any man of God, ask him about the Ten Commandment. Does he believe in that his, the Ten Commandment is still working? If he says yes, then you know that he's a minister of death. If he says no, then question him, why are you now teaching people to observe days? Why are you now teaching people to observe seasons, Christmas seasons, and all those seasons? Why are you? Because uh, 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 well, if, if he has done away with all those things, then we don't have to observe any day as special. Do you get it? Question that person. You have to question. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're not giving you any tangible answer from the scripture proof, you must leave. Hallelujah. You must leave because you can't joke with your soul. You can't use your soul to play game. You get a point. Do we understand what it means for somebody to be in the eternal condemnation? If you understand, we we'll take everything, we we'll take it our soul, salvation of our soul, very serious, serious more than anything on earth. But many people don't know. They don't know the magnitude or understanding what it means to be in eternal condemnation. So what we are there, people are joking with it, people are taking this trivia, my, my, my beloved mothers and sisters and brothers on this platform. Please, let's take things serious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said, the ministers of uh, our minister, our minister, the ministers of the spirit are glorious. For if the minister of condemnation, so hallelujah, the those who believe in the Ten Commandments is not uh, ended up with many Christians believe in that. I can tell you the truth. Many pastors believe in that. Holiness pastor yesterday was telling one of the pastors here 
that uh, you you if you people want to run and then and hide under the grace and commission they say the ten commandment is done away with the ten commandment is not done away with he wrote all those things to to my pastor and my pastor came and showed to me he's a holiness pastor believe in that you know that that pastor is a minister of death is is going to he sent the people following him into destruction according to scripture hallelujah and he's a minister of condemnation he said if the ministry of condemnation had glory glory the minister of righteousness exceed much more in glory so we are ministers we who believe totally that the lord has done away with the law including the ten commandment we who believe in that and for that matter we hold on to the lord jesus christ by faith such people we are the ones who are ministers hallelujah of righteousness but not condemnation praise the lord so if you can put your eyes down you understand us many of these ministers expose themselves by preaching condemnation on souls and put fear on the people so always they have fear many people under their uh, under their leadership not they are not there because they love god and want to serve him they are there because they fear put fear on them because they preach condemnation may the lord deliver us from that in jesus mighty name hallelujah so if the person believed that the ten commandment was not ended when jesus christ died on the cross and for that matter he teaches his people to observe days and seasons hallelujah that person is um, um, open minister of death is open because his ministry is being made known but the dangerous one is that the people who believe that ten commandment is not ended and yet they will not practice the ritual aspect of the law they are dangerous people they are the secret ministers of the death they believe that the ten commandment has not ended yet they will not practice the ritual aspect of the law so they will not observe days for people to see that they are in the law they will not hallelujah they will not do any rituals for people to see that they are in the law but yet they believe that the ten commandment is not ended such people are secret ministers of death they are the secret ministers of death so by his belief he is going into destruction and you who are also following him you're also going there it's a chain the law himself said if a blind leads a blind they all end up in ditch so by his belief though he believed that that Ten Commandment is not ended, which makes him a minister of death. Because according to the scripture, whoever lived by the law is dead. Or those who minister the law, they are, minister of, they are ministers of death. So the person, since the person is believing in the law, he's a minister of death. But yet because he's not practicing the ritual aspect of the law you may never know it's only come by confession if the person confesses then you will know it if you refuse to confess it you will never know it praise the lord that's a dangerous aspect you will never know it so if you're following such a person and it's never confessing that the Ten Commandment has not ended, and you don't know his belief system regarding that thing. And he knows that that is what he believes. And yet, teaching you, don't commit sin, don't commit that, don't commit this, don't commit that, don't commit. And most of them, they they, that's what they will preach because they will preach the law to you. Don't do this, don't do that, do this, and, that. and they will speak 
harshly against sin and other things. He's doing nothing. He's doing nothing about your salvation. He's doing nothing. Because at the end of the day, the Lord that he believes in will take, will take him into judgment. And he take his followers to that same place. And that's what the devil is doing today. You get a point? Hallelujah. So if somebody says, oh, I, the Lord Jesus Christ um, did not end the law. And the Lord is working. That means he believes in the law and is practicing the law. And say, because of that, I'm living by it. So I am not going to, I will, I'm, I'm, I will honor my father and my mother. I will not go into murder. I will not go into commit adultery. I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to uh, bear false witness. I'm not going to convert. And because of the law, he's doing that. Hallelujah. You cannot see the difference between that person and the person who is also practicing the new law. Because practicing of it is similar. Praise the Lord. Practicing of it is similar. But the difference is in it is that the Ten Commandment did not come by grace or with grace. And so when your practice is, you are not going to be judged by grace. When you believe in it, you are not going to be judged by grace. You are going to be judged by the law. And the scripture says, no one will be justified by the law. Praise the Lord. So all those things you can say, oh, I'm not converting. I'm not. Yeah, it's right to do that. But when you do it with the consciousness of the law in mind, you are going to be judged by that. That is why the Lord Jesus Christ knows the, 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 what the implication of that, of, of it. That is why he specifically, emphatically said, I'm giving you a new law. I'm giving you a new law. Because if you refuse to give or allow us to go back to the law of the Old Testament, not to convert, not to do this, not to do this, Hallelujah, because it is a, because it's a command from God, we will still bind ourselves. Hallelujah. That is why he gave us a new law. Say, I'm giving you a new law. Do you know that the, this Ten Commandment, all those things, bound, bound together as one, as love, according to Romans chapter 13, verse 9. 9 to 10 shows that do not that shall not do this, those shall do not all come together as one as law. So it's the law in the old testament. And the law said, though the, the Lord knows that when we go back to that law and begin to uh, live by it, not commit uh, adultery, not steal, not that because it is a commandment, we will still bound ourselves with the law, and for that matter. He needs to give us a new law. He said that in Matthew and John chapter 13, verse 40, 44, 34, he says, A new commandment I gave you, I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciple. All, meaning the physical and spiritual beings. Everybody will know that you are my disciple. If you are living by this instruction, then you become really disciple of God. You cannot live by the instruction of Old Testament and still believe that you are disciple of God. It's a lie. Praise the Lord. It's a lie. If you love one another, hallelujah, then you become, you become my disciple. As I command you, if you obey the new law, then you are my disciple. Obeying the old law, you are a disciple of Moses and be judged by that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Koma si ande, prokaba zi ande liba, prokaba zi ande liba, lokshabe prokaba. So the secrets. Ministers of death are those who believe in the Ten Commandments and yet they don't practice the ritual aspect of it. So they don't observe Sabbath. They don't observe years or all those things. They don't observe it. And yet they believe in the Ten Commandments. They are the secret ministers of death. 
you need to know from their confession. So if you have a pastor, you can ask him about that. That is the Ten Commandments all ended. If he says, and he says yes, then why? Do you teach Titan? If the Ten Commandments and all the law are ended, why do you teach Titan? He will not have anything to tell you. He may say all kinds of stories, but that's not true. Praise the Lord. Then why do you practice Christmas observation? Why do you practice Easter? Did the Lord tell us to practice Easter? Which is not in the Bible. Have you heard about the Easter egg and all those rituals they do in the Easter time by the Roman Catholics? How could it be the practice of Christians? Praise the Lord. The Lord gave us a command concerning this Passover thing, Passover bread, which is his body. He says, we should do this in remembrance of him whenever we do it. Meaning, we can decide to do at any time. Even the days of the uh, old or the early church, they were doing it every day. But we will have fixed it on Easter time so that we can, devil can manipulate us to celebrate the uh, festival with them. And Christians agree to it. May the Lord have mercy on us. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Even the Sunday churches that we have been made, we have made it as a special day for Christians is wrong. Read the scriptures. The Bible says they meet every day. Why? Because they don't have anything, any day special. It's wrong. May the Lord give grace to us. May the Lord give us the grace to understand things so that we can do the right thing. So that nobody will mislead us in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. God bless you. In the name of our Lord Jesus. May we enter into a time of prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please do the sharing. Save somebody. Invite somebody to come and know things that we are learning here. So that a person can also save his life. Because we, in the last days we are in a mess. The devil has shook the system with wrong things in the church. But the Lord will deliver his children. The Lord will deliver his children. In Jesus' mighty name. Call Masi and the Rokaba, Bazi and the Roktali and the Reba, Rokaba, Bosi and the Begin to give time to the Lord. Bless the name of 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 the Lord. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Call Masi and the Rokaba, Likabra, Yabo, Zokton, Dalabe, Likabra, Yaba, Zokton, Dalaba, Balabe, Likabra, Yande, Brooks and the Reba. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Christ of Nazareth, we pray to Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer, Lord God of Israel, everlasting Father, King of Kings, we give time to you, we bless your holy name, we adore your holy name, there is no one like you, great God of Israel, everlasting Father, we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, we are asking the Lord this morning, that the Lord will certify us with his new mercy and compassion, no, you wherever you are, you may be in the afternoon, you may be in the evening, you may be the different time from our time here. This here is morning, four o'clock. Hallelujah. Getting to five o'clock now. But since you join us spiritually, you are with us. You are here. Hallelujah. So this morning blessing will come upon you. We are praying, asking the Lord that the Lord may the Lord satisfy us with his new mercy and compassion. According to the book of Lamentation, chapter 3, according to the book of Lamentation, chapter, two, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 22 to 3, it says, Through the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning, indicating that every morning the Lord releases compassions and, uh, and, and the mercy upon the earth. And whoever stand up in it, the Lord's compassion and mercy will, 
will be, up, will be upon that person. This morning, we are asking the Lord, let your mercy and compassion be upon us. By your mercy and compassion, Lord, my God, forgive us all our sins. By your mercy and compassion, deliver us from the works of the devil. By your mercy and compassion, save our life from going to lake of fire. By your mercy and compassion, avenge us. By your mercy and compassion, save our, our children. May your beauty come upon us. May your glory come upon us. May your uh, may your may, may may you certify us. May you cause us to rejoice and be glad in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you open up and pray. Father, the Lord, we pray the Lord, my God, by your mercy and compassion, deliver us from the works of the devil. By your mercy, save us, O oh God. By your mercy, deliver us from every work of the devil against our soul, against our destiny, against our salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every delusion of any kind, from any anger, from altars, from every power of darkness, from spiritual host of wickedness, from prosperities, from occultic powers, may you crush it, destroy it, Lord. Father, contend with those who contend with us. In the name of Jesus Christ, and save our lives, O oh God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our King, our Master, Divine Father, Lord, we rely on you by your mercy and compassion. Save our lives, O oh God, by your mercy and compassion. Deliver our soul from the powers of darkness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the Lord, my God, have mercy on us. Save our soul from every work of the devil. Save our soul from every <coughs> demonic manipulation. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Heavenly Father, we pray thee. Let your Holy Spirit be with us. By your mercy, Lord my God, deliver us, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. We are asking the Lord that the Lord will prepare the heart of the elect for the message of the kingdom that is coming. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is prepared, preparing people as a kingdom preachers to set out in this time around to preach about the kingdom. We are praying that God will prepare the heart of the elect all over the world, that the Lord and the Lord set his people out, the people will press into the kingdom. May you open your mouth and pray. We pray for all those elect all over the world, that as the people are set out by the Lord to preach the kingdom, may they press into the kingdom. Every resistance, any strainer be crushed out of the way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the Lord have his own way in the midst of his children. Bring the souls into the kingdom. Let your people troop into the kingdom. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth we pray. We are praying that the Lord will make it impossible for us to lose his kingdom. The Bible says we should ask him anything and he will do it. We are asking the Lord, God, make it impossible for us to lose your kingdom. Your word says we should ask you anything you will do. What we need mostly in our life is the kingdom. Give the kingdom to us, Lord my God, and make it impossible for us to lose it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, we pray the Lord my God, have mercy on us, O oh God, by your mercy and compassion. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray that the covenant that the Lord Jesus Christ has with the church will also come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, about seven years ago, when, when I didn't know, I did not know about, about righteousness, complete righteousness in the heart and, and in the outside. I didn't know about that. Hallelujah. And I was just, just a normal Christian life, normal pastor preaching, just, uh, just like other pastors are preaching. And one day, the Lord told me that you love to go to heaven. You want to make inherit the kingdom, but you don't know how to make it. And from that time, the Lord told me you should have covenant of mercy with him. Covenant of mercy with him. So the church have a covenant of mercy. The Lord said the part, your part to play is to have all night prayer chain for 21 days. After that, the Lord began to teach me what it means to be righteous completely in the heart and in the outside. Praise the Lord. To be righteous complete in the heart and the outside. And that's how we come about the teaching, complete righteousness teaching. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I appreciate that what the Lord did. And it's a covenant between God and the church, kingdom of heaven vision. And I pray that this, that this covenant of mercy of the Lord come upon you also. Let this covenant of mercy come upon you also. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in Jesus' mighty name, may the mercies of the Lord never allow your soul to get lost. In Jesus' name, I pray for you. Amen. God, Richard, bless you. Please do the sharing. Share this message. And believe it will serve somebody. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God willing, 
we shall meet again. There is another information that we have for you, or a news. The announcement is that we, we're about, it left with us about three months to live here and set out for crusades. Hallelujah. So set out for crusades. Hallelujah. So whatever help that the Lord lays on your heart to send to us to help us in crusade. Hallelujah. May you may, may the Lord touch your heart to do that. Praise the Lord for about three months now. Uh, by December, we have to set out for crusade. That's what the Lord has told us. By December, how to set out for crusade and preach the gospel. The Lord actually is preparing us. I'm telling you, since we came here, how the Lord has worked on us is a very serious thing. I've got to know that when I was in the city, I was joking. I'm telling you, when I was city, I was in city, I was joking. And everybody testified to that fact in this place. Praise the Lord. That when they came here, the light has that even the teachings about the kingdom, I came to know it here. I didn't know when I was in the city. And it's not possible to preach that message, to call people to come and become kingdom preachers over there. Praise the Lord. May the Lord brought us here to prepare us to do that work. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you to be part of this move. The Lord is making a strong move this time around. And you, 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 God will bless you to be part of it. I'm telling you the truth. Hallelujah. God will be bless you for taking part of it because it's the message that turns people's heart to God. Yes, the kingdom message. Yes, last time we learned that when John was sent by God that he's, he has to come and turn people's heart to Christ, the message he preached is the kingdom. That is all. So the message of kingdom really turned people's heart to Christ. Hallelujah. And that was the message the Lord is sending us with. <laughs> Hallelujah. May the Lord bless all of you for being part of this move of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. See you and bye-bye. Uh, kingdom preachers are here. Hallelujah. They are here. They want to. They are waiting for us. You can also enjoy their meeting for a while. Amen. We are done. Come. Come in. Come in.
your holy name, we adore your holy name, how wonderful you are, how marvelous you are, in the name of our Lord Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, pray to God, we give time to you, we bless your holy name, how wonderful you are, great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord, great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord, O Kabazi and Delebebelebe, right Kabazu Tongalabababe, in the name of our Lord Jesus. Oh, <laughs> 